Aloha guys, this is Dr. Tom Walker coming at you from somewhere in the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, we're going to talk about mystical energy and modern physics again. We're laying the groundwork, guys, to go into a lot of other things that uh, many of you might find more, more interesting. But I like this too. Don't forget my book. Now I'm, I have a brand new YouTube channel. These are brand new videos. Like, <laughs> like I actually have to say that. I'm not a video photographer. Like I had to say that. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Buy my book. Tell your friends. Be the first kid on your block to own my book. Okay. Now today, or uh, however far we get before I run out of time, we're going to keep talking about mystical energy that permeates our universe. We talked about the cosmological constant and zero point energy and quantum energy or quantum fields and uh, and so forth and we're going to keep doing it okay shortly after quantum mechanics was introduced in the 1930s some scientists and philosophers noticed that it sounded a lot like something they'd heard before newtonian physics with its indestructible miniature billion billiard ball particles bouncing around eternally and his strict set of mechanics didn't sound a bit like ancient mystical knowledge. Uh, sorry, guys. Quantum mechanics, on the other hand, did. we got jets going over. With its mysterious unknown fields and virtual particles popping in and out of existence, it sounded, sounded very much like ancient Chinese Taoist thought. With matter waves... Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, non-locality, and the Copenhagen interpretation, which required consciousness, or at least measurement, <laughs> or observation, to collapse the waveform into particles that comprise our world. It could be concluded that we're, that we're talking about the same fundamental energy. Now, obviously, that's the point I'm trying to make. Is uh, To the annoyance of scientific orthodoxy, of course, they just flat reject it. Uh, it does seem like that modern physics has sounded a great deal like ancient mystical belief in some ways. Uh, the thing that impresses me a lot is that, uh, let me back up and say, re relativity and special and general theories were constructed by Albert Einstein, but quantum theory was, was um, invented or developed by a number of great scientists, many of whom were scientific superstars, several of whom won a Nobel Prize. They should be. Even the quantum, the, uh, many of the quantum founders believe the same thing we just said. Uh, the great Niels Bohr, who suggested the first atomic structure and was a friend and competitor of Einstein, went so far as to have the yin-yang symbol included in his family coat of arms. Now guys, this is hardcore. You do that now, nowadays you'll lose funding and tenure and everything else. Oh my God, it would be so. Probably not, but it, it would be frowned upon, I'm sure, by your <clears throat> conservative colleagues. I mentioned previously that many of the quantum founders also believed consciousness to be fundamental to everything else. Now, a great deal of time is going to be spent on that, starting with our next couple of lessons. In modern times, they would have funding cut and tenure denied for such blatant heresy. Oh, my God. But things are changing, maybe. What I find interesting are the scientists who suggest that the great subtle energy of the ancients and zero-point energy might be the same. And I'm sure you've guessed by now my feelings on that. Okay, the rest of this video is going to talk about uh, one paper written by Dr. Hal Puthoff. Puthoff. Here he is. Dun, dun, dun. He's an amazing man. He's best known for being a, uh, one of the developers of the Remote Viewing Project. And we'll have entire videos on that coming up very soon. But uh, after he took that as far as it could go, he, he uh, began a serious investigation into zero-point energy with the uh, uh, goal to be able to harness some of this energy in some way. He is likely the world's leading authority on zero-point energy, or if not, he's certainly one of them. All right. Now, this is going to deal with one paper he wrote, and it was several years ago, 2002, but I still think it's really relevant. So a lot of this is stuff out of his paper. I'm going to read some, a lot of it directly. So hang in there. This is important. Well, at least I think so. 
Hal Putoff, PhD, is an amazing man, one of many who I consider to be a hero. Trained as a laser physicist, Hal had been on the cutting edge of research for decades. He has several patents and is currently one of the world's leading researchers on zero-point energy, something he's worked on for many years. Some would likely consider him the world expert on zero-point energy. He is best known, however, for being a founder and the former director of remote viewing at program at SRI, Stanford Research Institute. Out in, I believe it's in Menlo Park, California. It's in the Bay Area. Remote viewing brought him worldwide fame, but I'm sure it was frustrating as well. We will discuss remote viewing in detail very soon. It's one of my favorite topics. In 2002, Hal published a fascinating paper in Research News and Opportunities in Science and Theology. Now, obviously that's not nature, the preeminent one, but I think it's of great importance, and it's in great, of great importance to our topic now. Excuse me while I drink some Diet Pepsi. <clears throat> the article was called Searching for the Universal Matrix in Metaphysics. I saw it many years ago and remain impressed. I was struck by this as well because Putoff is not, is not known for spirituality and metaphysics. He's hardcore science, although he, he does like cutting edge stuff and he's always worked with it. He's on the edge there of, to the point that some of the orthodoxy would uh, frown upon his work, I'm sure. Putoff has published a long list of scientific papers in several books, but this one remains among my favorites because I'm strongly interested in the topic of subtle energy, which I term the force, for the fact that Snappy and everyone in the world knows it, knows it from the Star Wars movies. Now it's known by a lot of other names, Chi, Prana, Ki, etc. Uh, but the force, and that's why Da, 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 da. My book is called The Force is With Us. Why? Because most people know what's meant by the Force. Now, it's actually misrepresented some in Star Wars movies, but uh, it's, uh, you know it's still fun. After uh, practicing Chinese martial arts for 48 years, me, and having been a complementary and alternative medicine practitioner for over 30 years, <coughs> excuse me, the existence of the Force is no longer a theory with me. Very much so. Here's what Hal Putoff thinks about it. Throughout mankind's cultural history, there's existed the metaphysical concept that man and cosmos are interconnected by a ubiquitous, all-pervasive sea of energy that undergirds and is manifested in all phenomena. Now, we've pretty much demonstrated that in our previous tapes, although some would look at them and say, ah, it's a, it's a poppycock, it means nothing. This pre-scientific concept, pre-scientific, of a cosmic energy goes by many names in many traditions, such as Qi, or in Chinese, Qi, Japanese, alternate spelling of Qi, Taoism, Prana, from, I believe, Yoga, in it, Mana, in, uh, Kahuna, from Hawaii, da, da. Baraka, Sufi, and Ilan, Ilan, <laughs> Ilan Vatel, Bergsonian metaphysics, and so forth. Complementary to the above metaphysical concept, Contemporary physics also posits an all-pervasive energy field called quantum vacuum energy or zero-point energy, a random ambient fluctuating energy that exists in so-called empty space. Influenced by consciousness. Uh, consciousness is going to be the focus of several hours of, of discussion here very soon. Should we further consider the possibility that such random vacuum energy might be subject to influence by consciousness or human intention? Then given it's well understood by physicists that a restructuring or cohering of vacuum energy would have a physical consequence, would have physical consequences for matter, animate or inanimate, such, it could, uh, such could provide a rational basis for healing or other processes that are part and parcel of the pre-scientific view. In such fashion, the similarities, differences, and possible synthesis of the pre-scientific and modern concepts of an all-pervasive energy field can be considered. Stay with me. As a physicist specializing in fundamental quantum physics, and yet interest, interested in these issues, I have an abiding interest in pushing the envelope. Now, ah, that's putting it mildly. <coughs> Excuse me. In regard to the present scientific paradigm. Unfortunately, as it now stands, mainstream physics reductionism 
is leading to an ever more complex picture of nature involving a proliferation of particles, the possibility of yet more fundamental forces, there are four recognized right now, the implications of incorporating additional dimensions in superstring theory, which has fallen out of favor recently, by the way, and so forth. <coughs> now, excuse me, I've done a lot of talking. So what's put off saying? It's getting too complicated. They keep adding all this stuff. Why? Because they're, they're reductionists, they're materialists. They keep wanting to come back. When, in, in spite of the evidence staring them in the face, <coughs> that the universe is more of a thought than a machine, they keep coming back and insisting it's a machine. How's that for summing it up? Thus, in spite of efforts to develop a grand unifying theory to simplify our picture of nature, the actual day-to-day -day work in this effort is complexifying. I like that word, complexify. Faster than the hope for simplification. Therefore, not only are we missing holism on a grand scale, but a gratifying holism. We should be looking to simplify things. Theory of everything. Just for the physical sciences alone, just uh, as appear, appears to be rapidly accelerating goalpost. Contemplation of such provocative issues in both physical and life sciences led me to investigating an era, area of physics concerned with what is known as quantum vacuum fluctuations or zero-point energy, a universal background energy pervading all of space and associated with fluctuations of underlying space itself. Here's the great psychic Uri Geller having been a spoon. Specifically, I began to consider the underlying quantum, quantum fluctuations as a fundamental uh, stuff out of which a greater synthesis could be built. I hasten to add that I do not mean for such an approach to be simple, uh, simply reductionism on a grander scale with no room for non-physical factors to play a role. Rather, to the degree that energy is involved not only in physical but in nominally non- or paraphysical phenomena, including perhaps such mundane phenomena as thought, charisma, etc., let alone psychokinesis. Oh my God, there's a taboo word. We're going to wear it out later. Then such energy patterns might in principle emerge as a result of cohering or patterning the otherwise random, random ambient zero-point energy. For me, this hypothesis emerged when I considered how uneconomical nature would have to be to posit on the one hand an all-pervasive energetic field of ki or chi, as in the metaphysics of the martial arts and acupuncture, and on the other hand, also posit an all-pervasive energetic field of quantum zero-point energy. It appeared to me to be more likely that we're dealing with a single underlying substructure which goes by various names and various cosmologies, depending on whether it is in, uh, it is in its pre-manifest random form or patterned at various hierarchical levels, including the purely material. Now, I have, make no bones about saying that I very much agree with this. I think we're all talking about the same thing. The further we go in with modern physics, the more it substantiates it in the opinion of people like Dr. Putoff and Dr. Tom. In my professional area, I began, the pure, uh, I began with the pure physics side. In the first published study of the significance of zero-point energy for broad issues, I showed that the basic stable states of matter are not merely inert st static structures, but rather depend on the presence, but rather depend on the presence of the underlying sustaining zero-point energy, which is continually being absorbed and readmitted on a dynamic balance basis. Pull the plug on zero-point energy and all atomic structure would collapse. And this is from Physical Review. Pretty wild. Okay, we're going to wrap it up here in a moment. But Dr. Putoff also goes to speculate on gravity and inertia as being direct results of the zero-point energy. Newton described gravity as a mysterious force that acts as a distance. Einstein's amazing general theory of relativity stated that gravity and acceleration are indistinguishable. Okay, we're about to run out of time. We'll finish this up on the next video. Some interesting, very interesting things to say about gravity and inertia.
So till next time, tune in. This is Dr. Tom signing off.